welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Rate and review the show at kevinmd.com slash rate. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash follow. Today we welcome back on the show Wendy Schofer. She's a pediatrician and she co-wrote the Kevin MD article, We Are Not Defined by What We Eat. Wendy, welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to give this another try. <laughs> Our first episode was wonderful. So I encourage all the listeners to go seek that out. But for those who didn't get a chance to listen to our first episode together, Wendy, just briefly share your story and journey to where we are today. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I am a pediatrician and I have had such a journey along the way here. I've had many years in a primary general pediatric practice. I went out into the community doing a lot of uh, nonprofit work. I've been in the military. I've been civilian. I've had a lot of different hats that I've worn over time. And uh, now I find that my, my practice is split between part-time with uh, pediatric urgent care and then also building out in another way in the community with a coaching program that I own. Excellent. So let's go straight into this new article you co-wrote with your daughter. It's titled, We Are Not Defined by What We Eat. Now, for those of you who get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why both of you decided to write it? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Someone had approached me and asked me to actually write an article that was entitled, We Are What We Eat. You Are What You Eat. And I was like, oh my God, I so don't believe in that. Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? <laughs> and so my daughter and I were just kind of talking about how all of the common things that we hear we disagree with. Like there, there are things that people have used in these phrases that we think that are helpful, but they're actually not being helpful, especially in today's day and age. And that whole concept of you are what you eat has turned into more of a, more of a value statement, more of a judgment about what people are eating, as opposed to where it's been used historically as an aspirational a uh, type of mantra. So give us an example. What, what, what do you mean by that? Give us an example of <laughs> why you don't believe in that particular aphorism. Yeah. Well, so, you know, if we go back, even just looking like within religion, so looking at Christianity, talking about the blood and body of Christ, well, you know, it, it's sanctified, okay? It's aspirational that we would be, that, that what we're eating is becoming a part of us, okay? And we are becoming holy through that. And yet, as we look at how it's used today, a lot of times when folks talk about you are what you eat, there's an image that is associated with it. And it's this image of this very slim body that's kind of having all of these healthy foods fruits and vegetables and tall glasses of water inside of this image. And then on the other side, they have this pudgy person mm -hmm. who is filled with pizza and processed foods. And it's just all of a sudden saying, okay, well, this person only eats this. This person is defined by what they're eating. Mm -hmm. And it's overly simplistic and it's not actually helping anybody from the kids that we're teaching to the adults that are trying to look at how are they eating, what are their concerns about their own weight, about their own eating habits, and trying to make change. But there's a lot of that identity coming in when we start talking about you are what you eat. It's just not helpful. So obviously you're a pediatrician. So take us into the exam room. What are some of these nuances that you're talking about? Yeah. Well, you know, the there's so many levels of nuance with it. You know, it's really trying to look at all the things that we've learned as adults, and especially as physicians, about what is healthy or unhealthy, maybe the right way to eat, the wrong way to eat, and how that is coming through in our language with our kids, how we're teaching them to make different decisions about their, their food choices or how they're going to move. There's a lot of layers of what's healthy or unhealthy. And unfortunately, that is really creating a disconnect because parents are thinking, ah, this is what my kid needs to do in order to be healthy. And then the kid is like, that's not what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I don't want to move like that. I don't want to eat like that. And so it becomes this kind of butting of heads. And so a lot of times what we do is just kind of break it down. What, what is the actual goal here? How do we want to look at food in particular? So it's something where I work with parents to be able to look at how can we use food as a fuel mm -hmm. and how does it fuel their body? And then how can they help teach that to their kids as well? as opposed to there's a right food or a wrong food, mm -hmm. because honestly, it's not about the food. It's, you know, there's no one food that's perfect. There's no one food that's awful. Mm -hmm. And it's just, how is it fueling our body right now? In the article, we were talking about, you know, easy eating a bag of cheesy popcorn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it just happened to be the thing that I was eating right before I was writing the article. I'm like, Hey, why not? I am not defined by that bag of popcorn. I really enjoyed it, by the way. <laughs> I really enjoyed that bag. But that's the thing. It fueled me at the time. And a lot of times folks will look at it like, oh, well, this is the right kind of fuel. No, you know what? I was fueled because I wanted to enjoy that bag of popcorn. No values associated with it. Just I enjoyed it. We what can is, make choices like that. Yeah. What are some other questions that we can ask, it doesn't have to be kids, but we can ask um, our patients about nutrition that doesn't confine or define them in, in a way that these aphorisms normally do. I love that question. And I think it's something that it really kind of depends on the conversation that you're already having with the patient. I, I think looking at asking questions that kind of get them to be able to explain how they choose to eat, not kind of asking, well, like what kind of diet do you follow mm -hmm. or asking very yes, no types of questions, but, you know, describe to me, you know, how do you choose what you eat? What's on your menu? Getting a little bit more insight because that opens up that conversation about why they choose certain foods. Mm -hmm. It gives a little bit more of a picture <laughs> I, I really firmly believe that it's not about the food. Sure. Um, <laughs> we focus so much on the individual foods that folks eat. And there's so much more to the story about how they eat, why they eat, when they eat, how much they eat. And I think that there's a lot more of the story that we can get to, to really understand their relationship with food, as well as their relationship with their body by just asking those questions without a set agenda, just mm -hmm. letting them roll with it. Can you tell us a story, case study, where you had success talking to one of your patients about nutrition? Give me an example where you move the needle. You know, I think that probably one of the best ones is um, talking about, it's actually a, a compilation of parents in my, my first group coaching program, I had put out the call that I was interested in working with parents who were kid, worried about their kid's weight, specifically about having overweight children. And the parents, uh, they were all moms in that group. They came in and we worked together over time, just kind of understanding what were our concerns as parents. So, and I, put me right there in the middle of that pack as well, because there's a lot of worry about our kids' weight mm -hmm. uh, right now. But as we work together over time, it, you know, it, it's something that the parents would describe to me how I realized that it isn't about my child's weight. It isn't about what my child is eating. It's actually about what I'm making it all mean. It's my concerns mm -hmm. about what weight means. It's about my concerns about my own, you know, repeated diet or always thinking that I have to lose 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so the success story in all of that is how every woman that came into that group came from a different perspective. They, they came from, you know, a different family background, different diets, different weights, everything. But they all got to that place where like, oh, hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. this actually isn't my child's problem. 
it's something that I get to work on now. I get to understand and I get to help them. And that was a big aha moment to really help the whole family. And okay. a lot of that work is with the moms, you know, with the parents being able to, to make that change for themselves. We're talking to Wendy Schofer. She is a pediatrician and she co-wrote the Kevin MD article. We are not defined by what we eat. So Wendy, you mentioned that this popular reference, you are what you eat is one thing that you certainly want to dispel. Are there any other sayings or proverbs regarding nutrition that you don't necessarily approve of? It's not about my approval. <laughs> you know, I, I think that one of the big things like parents are looking for, you know, the, the right way to help their kids right now, they're looking for the right diet. They're looking for the right plan, um, the right foods. And I don't know, that's necessarily a, a euphemism or a saying, but I think just dispelling that myth that there's a right way mm -hmm. that they're looking for really what. I work with folks on is to really look at how they are already discovering what's right for their family. The answer isn't somewhere else. It, it's really something that they are already discovering the clues and then how can they make that? And my final question, what are some of your take home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Oh my goodness. Well, I would love to say, first of all, I want to give a shout out to my daughter for helping me write this article. So it's a family affair, which does come back to the whole thing about that message to, to my, your audience. Thank you so much for bringing me, <laughs> but it's really a family affair. How can we work together as a family, as we're talking about food, as we're talking about movement, as we're talking about making lifestyle choices that we actually want to share with the whole family, not, you know, just quick fixes and diets that we're like, oh, this isn't good enough for everybody else. Share it within the family. And that's where my daughter was helping me out with writing this article. She is one heck of a writer, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's a shared experience. And she was actually talking with me through the writing of the article. She said, mom, you've really changed a lot over time. Like this is something you used to say. I'm like, I know, honey, <laughs> I know I'm evolving too. We're all trying to figure out, you know, what is, what is helping us right now? And kind of like how the fuel is helping us or how the food is fueling us. How is our approach helping us as well? And that whole thing about looking at, you know, food, you are what you eat. That's not actually helping. And that's something that is an approach that's evolved over time. We can all do it. Wendy, thank you so much again for sharing your time and insight. Thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you so much, Kevin.